In today's episode of The Unwritten Rule, we've got a couple of Mizzou things to touch on. We're going to talk uh, SEC opponents for men's basketball because they got those revealed in the last couple of days. Feels pretty fitting that we're doing a, a little schedule release because uh, in quick hits, we'll have some NFL schedule release talk uh, and whatnot. So, yeah, we'll have a. Uh, We'll have we'll have that for our basketball, and then we're going to do a quick preview of the Mizzou softball uh, regional. Obviously, the Tigers are hosting. We'll we'll have a uh, Karen or Brandon on down the road uh, to preview possibly a super regional or the next couple of games here. But we are going to talk a little regional softball action because Mizzou very high expectations heading into the postseason. Uh, and then we'll finish with quick hits, We've got jerseys of the week, Shawnee Main Birds, and the best things we learned. You already know the drill for a typical Friday show, and we won't keep you from it. Without further ado, The Unwritten Rule starts right now. I just, I... Marcel, where are you going with that disc? <laughs> you are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. Attention, everybody stop what you're doing. It's time for The Unwritten Rule, a Mizzou sports podcast brought to you by the Believe Network, alongside Peyton Haverman, and Kenny Van Doren. Here is your host, Jack Knowlton. Welcome back to The Unwritten Rule. Today is Friday, May 17th. And we have a schedule reveal. If no one's for the people who haven't been on Twitter in the last couple of days, uh, Mizzou got their SEC or Mizzou men's basketball, I should say, got their SEC opponents um, for next season. That's where we're going to start the show talking about. They don't have dates yet, uh, but we do know who the Tigers are playing. And obviously that that does have some interest because now, uh, of course, it's an 18-game SEC schedule uh, with Oklahoma and Texas joining. So Mizzou will obviously play the Longhorns and the Sooners. They're actually doing, if you're looking on the YouTube, you'll, have seen, you'll see already, but they are uh, playing both those teams on the road. So I'll just... I'll, I'll, a rapid fire through this, Peyton and Kenny. You guys can give your your thoughts on some of these games at home. Missouri plays. This is in alphabetical order, very um orderly by Mizzou's graphics department. Uh, at home, Mizzou will play Alabama, Arkansas, Kentucky, LSU, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, uh, South Carolina, Texas A and M, and Vanderbilt. On the road, Arkansas, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi State, Oklahoma again, Tennessee, Texas, and Vanderbilt. So you, you heard, obviously, they they kept. Uh, you know, the two there, they keep, you know, two fixed matchups and then they have the rotating third one that uh, every team plays twice. It's very confusing. Missouri will play three teams twice. And by the looks of it, it's Oklahoma, Vanderbilt and Arkansas. So they kept that matchup with Arkansas restored kind of an old big 12 thing with playing Oklahoma twice. And then I'm not going to complain about getting Vanderbilt twice in most years. Obviously last year we can just forget about, but thoughts boys on, uh, on Mizzou's, 24, 25 SEC opponents. Uh, it seems relatively favorable for Mizzou. I'd say like, again, nothing is going to look super favorable on paper coming off an 0 19 year, but it's pretty much a brand new team. Uh, I especially really like that. They got Vanderbilt and Oklahoma twice. Vanderbilt, of course, no longer coached by Jerry Stackhouse. They were very bad last season. Uh, as well. So it's good to get them twice. Oklahoma, I don't think many people expect much of this season. There's rumors of NIL issues. There were rumors Porter Mosier was looking to get out of Norman. Um, so they're not a super upbeat team. I don't I, I don't know if uh, Yaya Keda is uh, still on the team, but it'd be really nice for him to maybe <laughs> get a video package when he returns. Um Man, the two Arkansas games, I'm on my hands and knees. Just win one of those. Please, please, please beat Cal once this season. That is all I'm hoping for. Please. Yeah, I think one of the things that really stands out to me about the schedule is, like, there isn't, like, any, like, extreme road environment in the SEC, like, on this schedule to me. I think probably one of the best ones would have to be Auburn. I, I you know, watching some of the Big 12 games for Texas over the last couple of years, um, the students there do pack it when, when the games matter and w when the team is good. So those are some of the good ones. But, I mean, the, the, this team has proven, this program's proven they can win on the road in some of these uh, arenas and at some of these cities 
Uh, of course, those teams will be different. We don't even know how some of the SEC teams will shake out before the start of the season It you know happens. Uh, but I like it. I, I think it's good to have Oklahoma and Texas on the schedule to start um, your first year. They're, I mean, the first year of a 16-team field and um, two teams that they played in the Big 12. So I think it's just a lot of fun to bring back some of those rivalries. And um, not too long ago, Mizzou played Oklahoma in the 2021 tournament. And uh, unfortunately, the Tigers did not walk away with a win, but they have two opportunities in 2025 to come away with a win. Kyle, you brought back so many horrible, horrible memories. That game made me so frustrated. It, we we were all there. Austin Reeves, dog. Yep. Future or current Los, current Los Angeles Laker, Austin Reeves. Brady Manick went went to the national championship the year the year after. Lost to Kansas. Wild stuff. Yeah, that was a. I don't, I I, I kind of I want to revisit that game for a second because that was. Oh, we can't. I can't have that again. That was that was truly, bad. Truly, truly, he had the whole Xavier Pinson thing where Pinson came in, played absolutely horrible, and Conzo benched him the rest of the game. Had bugs out there the rest of the way. Oh my god, just a nightmare game. The winner got to go play Jalen Suggs and Gonzaga. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's Mizzou was up at halftime, weren't they? Oh man, that is hit so that dumb. box court. Um, and I, I remember the only players that looked like they were trying by the end were Tillman and Drew Smith. I mean, it was so it was such a bad game. Really, just one of my least favorite games ever. Look at that attendance: five thousand seven hundred and sixty-four people in a yep, March Madness game. There. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that was. Yeah, we, that was Kenny before. and I went and watched uh, Texas literally like minutes after they lost to Abilene Christian. Shaka Smart left. Uh, yep. Boy, that set off that night for the SEC was actually kind of impactful when you think about it because Conzo was out the door the next year. Chris Beard took over at Texas. Then his whole thing happened. Now he's back. Interesting things to look back on. Yeah. The coaching carousels have been, especially this offseason, have been fun. Yeah, that game was horrible. So hopefully Mizzou doesn't have another game like the Sooners. Kenny, I don't know with your road thing. Like, it, I, obviously, like, yeah, not every environment is, like, iconic. But it just it just makes me nervous whenever Mizzou's on the road in almost anything. I just feel like road SEC games, especially in basketball, always just seem to get a, a little bit weird when you're the favored team going on the road. Obviously we hope that Missouri, you know, it didn't really matter last year because Missouri wasn't the favored team in pretty much every road game they played. But I would hope that, you know, against like Georgia and Vanderbilt, you know, at the very least those, those games are winnable, but then you just have like crazy stuff happen uh, on the road. Some of these home games, I mean, Peyton mentioned you get Cal at home. You, you, we, I, we were expecting that, I think, to keep that Arkansas home and home. So kind of always knew that. You got Mark Pope uh, with Kentucky coming there for his debut. That'll be kind of fun. Um, none of these are super. Oh, the Jordan Butler revenge game, South Carolina at home. He'll come back. Bama um, coming to town. You have that. Bama should be good. Um, Buzz yeah, Williams, pretty. I think, is the ang angriest we have ever gotten at a coach watching in the stands. So that <laughs> she yelled on the TV this time. Who I, I remember, um, Mississippi State's old coach before Jans. It was like, uh, what was his name? Ben Howland or something like that. He used to always run out to center court, and I remember like literally like coach from Tarkio, Missouri, sometimes on the court. <laughs> uh, and I remember getting really upset about that, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, so it's 18 games, I guess, looking at this and we'll probably revisit it when we get like the dates to kind of examine, you know, where might the difficult, most difficult stretch be all that stuff. But you look at this 18 games, give me a quick record prediction in sec play before, we, uh, before we I don't even hit. think the roster isn't even Not set. Quick, I, it feels like kind of a pointless exercise right now. If I had to guess right now, I'd say like, so it's 18 games. Yep. I, I'd go like eight and 10 right now, seven, 11. This league is good. It's very, very yeah. good. Mizzou got better. And so did everyone else. I like that. Uh, you want to write these down, Jack? Uh, yeah, I so do really want to write these later. down. Yeah, it's write that down. By the time um, I'm going to go nine and nine. And then once these teams are set, we know the, I, I, I forgot, you know, I've seen people do this before. It's like, you find out who your opponents are for the next season. And then you, you come up with like an idea of what the record will be. And then you yep. go into, 
like a couple months later when the schedule is officially released and then it changes because I mean, you kind of look at where these teams kind of line up and that's always kind of like the joke of it, you know, having to face maybe Kentucky and I don't know, Arkansas in the same week. Do you think you're going to win both kind of thing? Right. Uh, I'm just going to go nine and nine. And I think once these teams are more set, once Arkansas is set in stone, uh, I'll come back to it and I'll go over or under. That's what, that's what I think we do when the actual, when the actual whole thing comes out, we say, Ooh, that's a gauntlet. You know, because there's also well, there's you know you're gonna have you could get hot like right. We don't even know the whole also, It also is it becomes pointless during the year because you never know. Like LSU could just have a magical season for some random reason, like South Carolina last year. Like I don't think they will, but you never know. Uh, all right, I'll be I'll, I'll go 500 or above 500 so that we can say someone did. I'll do 11 and seven. That adds up, right? That mm-hmm. was their record in Gates' first year, so they were the highest finish ever. So you're thinking this is going to tie their best finish in the SEC ever? No, <laughs> I don't say yeah, that. I, don't I didn't say think that. so. All right, I'll go Let's ten, go and, ten eight. and eight. I'll be, I'll be, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. I'll go ten and eight. We'll keep those receipts, um, and yeah, we'll revisit it when we, uh, when we get like the dates. Obviously, non-con. What do we have? Do we know? Sorry, I'm putting you guys on the spot off the bat. Do we have any confirmed? Which non-con games does Mizzou have confirmed? I mean, Illinois and Kansas are happening again. Yeah. Um, I don't recall I don't any remember off, right off, off the, the bat, to be honest with you. Oh, they have, said... they have the home game against um, Minnesota. Oh, yep. Okay. I think they have a return game with Memphis. Uh, but I couldn't tell you any others, to yeah. be honest. There's going to be bye games, obviously. Uh, oh. Hopefully they don't schedule Jackson State this year. Boy, Dennis Gates' is lucky people forgot about that quickly. It almost behooved Missouri to go 0-19 in, non, in conference play, so people completely forgot that they lost to Jackson State. Jackson State. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll look. I'll I'll look that back up again. But I don't think because they haven't they haven't picked a preseason tournament or or November tournament or whatever to participate in. I know that's something Dennis said he wants to do eventually. Um, but I think he True. made it very clear in the early couple seasons of the program he doesn't want to do that yet. So I'm not sure how many of those are lining up to take Mizzou at the moment. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fair point. It's a fair point. But we'll see. We'll 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 do a whole schedule deep dive again as the season gets closer. But it's nice to see an SEC opponents list, and I think Mizzou, for at the very least, the ones they got, they have to play twice. I think it's it's relatively favorable. But we will see. Obviously, going forward, um, let's segue now from a team with preseason schedule to a team with their postseason one, boys. We got the softball uh, regional. Mizzou uh, did get the super regional. They finished seventh, so they they listened to us. They they said, uh, I don't I don't remember the other team, but I think one of them was Duke that they were battling between to get Duke that. Stanford that. were the two Duke, in front Duke of the Stanford. Yep. So they beat those two. So they're going to get a super regional if they get out. But they do have their uh, regional games here um, in Columbia. They're going to play Omaha, so not a far drive for their their opponent. And then Indiana and Washington is the other game. Uh, so you obviously see, you know, the the winner's bracket there. So Mizzou has to play Omaha first and then Indiana or Washington. What do you think of the draw, boys? Regional regional softball back in uh, Columbia. Uh, I mean, it's very cool to see. I mean, again, like this team was picked to finish 11th in the SEC. I don't think people doubted that they were going to be in this tournament. Uh, they even made it last year in what many people would probably say was Larissa Anderson's worst season at Missouri. And that when they finished 13th, they still made the tournament. That's how good the SEC is. Um, but for them to not only host a regional, but if they win the regional, they get to host the super regional. Uh, that is very, very impressive. Uh, definitely built off the backs of their SEC tournament run. I believe it was Gabe DeArmond pointed who pointed out uh, since Mizzou got the seven seed, LSU, who Missouri, of course, beat in the semifinals uh, to get to the tournament finals in the SEC, LSU was the nine seed, so they were the first team out. It's very plausible to believe that if Missouri had lost that game, they had to walk that game off. Um, if they had lost that game, they probably would have flipped swap, uh, flopped, bleh, flipped swap, but I cannot talk. 
Swap spots. Flip spots. There you go. <laughs> Flip spots. Swap spots. Whatever you want to say. Nolton's the English major here. Just kidding. He's a journalism major. Um, with LSU. So very cool for Missouri. Um, they they've been in, they've hosted regionals recently. I mean, while we were there from 2019 to 2023, they hosted a couple. They ran into that red hot James Madison team that I believe went to the College World Series. Um, so it's happened. It, success is nothing new under Larissa Anderson. You can say um, her program up next to the wrestling program has been the most successful uh, consistently at Mizzou for the for a good number of years. Um, but for the for a team that was fourth in the nation in attendance, being able to host not just a regional but a super regional potentially is huge. Um, that they they're very in good position to make a potential run here. Yeah, um, if you want to know like how it kind of works out too, Mizzou just needs to win three games and they advance. You know, beat Ohio, Omaha, beat the winner of Indiana and Washington, and then just go into that final game. Um, or sorry. Yeah, go into that final game on May 19th. But uh, I wanted to pull up the the records as well. Uh, Washington is 31 and 13. I like to look at the neutral sites too. Just, you know, mm -hmm. I guess this may, maybe isn't technically a neutral site if one of them faces Mizzou. Um, more of just an away game, but I think it would still count as a neutral site. Uh, but it would be they're, – they're 11 and 3, uh, the Huskies are. And then Indiana went 40 and 18 on the season, 14 and 3 at neutral sites. So th these ladies don't seem to be phased – on where they're playing and it's a good atmosphere in Columbia. I, you know, we've been to games there. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's just, I think Mizzou's in a good spot to kind of make a run and try to get to that college world series. Yeah. And I'm looking. Oh, go ahead, Peyton. Go ahead. On Omaha. They are 41 and 13. Uh, they beat South Dakota state, who is the one seed in the summit league uh, tournament. They beat them three times. Uh, so Omaha was not the, um, they were the number two seed in that tournament, I believe, uh, but they beat the number one seed there all three times they faced them. Uh, so that's their path nope. to facing Missouri. Nope. So they're they're pretty hot late too. Then is what it sounds like. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so and they're that, I mean, thirteen. That's what and I'm looking at a, fifteen and six away. Okay. I'm looking at a, a quote from the selection committee chair. Uh, and he said, how they played late does move them up some, but Missouri also has a lot of good wins for Missouri. 13 top 25 wins, three, one, three to one to win over LSU. So we mentioned that. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think that the SEC championship run definitely helped springboard this potential super regional. Uh, they will also play uh, the 10 seed regional in Durham. So that's Duke, Utah, South Carolina, and Morgan State. If they win this regional, that'll be... And then again, Mizzou will host that that uh, super regional if they get out of uh, of their regional. But ooh, I don't like I don't like that you said the Mavericks are playing hot late. That's not good. I wish they were limping into the into the big dance. Can't have a well. I mean, get to a super regional, a mid major team has to win to get in. I mean, they're not going to get in without winning, without being hot. Quite frankly, right? Was and was in, James? Go ahead. Yeah, never count out the the non power five team either. Uh, James, like, yeah. like Peyton said, James Madison was that prime example of you know maybe we kind of overlooked it two years ago, but I mean they they got it to the College World Series. Yeah, I mean all it takes is one. I mean James Madison had that ridiculous pitcher. I don't remember her name, but yeah. I mean she carried them single handedly all the way to uh, all the way to the World Series. Was that the Super Regional they beat Mizzou in as well? I don't recall for sure. It was definitely at Mizzou. That right. I that's, what, that's why I was like trying to remember because I I want to say they won another thing and then got to the World Series. But yeah, I think they ha that was I just remember. the regional. To be honest with you, and yeah, then they game. went on and won the super regional. Does, Does it, it say? Uh, Thirty nine and two. Wow. Try the recap. See if it's on the PDF. <laughs> We're gonna find this. No, I have an idea. I'm gonna just go to 2021. Go supers. Supers. It was a super regional. Oh wow! So that, that's what I yeah, thought. That's very interesting. Brutal. Yeah, we are not Duke's fans here. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see. You know, hopefully Missouri is getting to that super regional again. We'll um, 
have one of our softball experts come on and give us more more detail as the series and stuff goes on. But they do start that here this weekend. So definitely tune into that if you're in Columbia. Keep going. It's sick to be on top of all the attendance stuff. So that's very cool. We'll see how softball can pan out. With that, we'll finish the show, boys. Kick it to quick hits. Okay, quick hits time. We've got jerseys of the week. Kenny switched rooms. Kenny, what's your jersey of the week? Uh, my jersey of the week it goes to someone that was at an Astros game recently, and that's Jack Knowlton uh, visiting our friend Connor McGovern this week. And while they were uh, out and about in the town, they went to an Astros game, and Jack was wearing a Mike Fires jersey. This Very is not bold me. of him <laughs> to wear this at the game, and there's no proof that it's not him because his hair is that long. He wears a white hat all the time, and that is a Kansas hat for anyone who asks on the YouTube. It's not. It literally and says Missouri that this is, right there. This is near where uh, Jack was – was sitting at the game. Uh, for those who don't know, Astros fans don't like Mike Fires. I just found it kind of funny. Uh, it's probably just one of those game worn ones. There's even a comment right here if you see it on the right side of your screen on the YouTube. Kind of explains it. It is one of those 90s retro jerseys, and they probably just bought it to have Mike Fires on it. And it had Why do Mike they not Fires like Mike Fires? I uh, exposed the the cheating scandal. Uh, oh, the cheating scandal. Lovely. Um, but yeah, no, this is a brave act of heroism and valor. Uh, The Astros deserve to be held accountable uh, for their actions. Jose Altuve, one of the uh, biggest slash little uh, in stature (laughs) cheaters of all time. Uh, It's been proven countless times over and over. Jose Altuve, cheater. I I would like to, uh, I would like to separate myself from the cheating allegations. I did not wear, this is not me in this photograph. It's Connor McGovern right there on the left. Your friend that you went to. (laughs) Kenny's Kenny's a liar. Uh, I did enjoy my I did enjoy my time at Minute Maid Park. I I liked I liked the uh, that was my fourth fourth major league ballpark ticked off the list. I have a feeling I know what you're on the show uh, before. I have a feeling I know what your favorite uh, part of the park is, uh, Nolan. The roof. Oh, I thought it would have been the train. No, uh, I didn't know. Actually, it was the train. The roof is the same as the Brewers roof, so that's why I said that at first. But the train ugly, is the train. bad, horrible, warehouse like, <laughs> suburb like. Moving uh, on, u- utilitarian games don't get canceled. Oh right, uh, my jersey of the week is going to be the lack of jersey on Truman, uh, Truman the Tiger, of course, in this uh, SEC, ABC, ESPN um, graphic. It's supposed to be a Marvel style logo. Uh, all the SEC mascots are on it and clothed, except for Truman. Truman is just completely naked. Um, <laughs> no jersey to be found. Uh, really, it's just kind of to remind people that the SEC is not on CBS anymore. Uh, and that's really kind of sad to think about. But, um, you know, ESPN, ABC, it could be worse. Um, uh, but, man, Truman, why does he not have a jersey? And that's clearly the most um, the most notable thing about this photo. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, I, yeah, the, 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 I'll zoom in on the George Bulldog. <laughs> it's There's, not funny, guys. It's, it's pretty funny. It's um, funny. Does Truman like no, – does he normally wear a jersey, though? Like when he's just walking yeah. around campus? Yes. Yes. I mean, every time really? I see Truman, if I think look he has up, a jersey on. Look up Truman in the gift bar on Twitter right now, and you'll see that he has a, a jersey on of some kind. Yep, see, there he is. But the one right next to him, he's not wearing anything. Sometimes he doesn't, but most of the time he's got a jersey on. And this is an SEC football thing, so you have to remember. <laughs> oh, man, there's Truman, the famous Truman image. Um, I guess you're kind of right, Jack. He doesn't wear it. To he doesn't wear it that rooms. much. But this is, a, this is this is football. Truman. He's wearing a you basketball put a, jersey. You should have put a football jersey on him because it is for football. I agree. But also, I this know, yeah. Truman bobblehead has uh, super glue on its ankles because it was broken the move. But I was able to super glue it together. So good job, Peyton. Um, yeah, that is a little unfortunate. The Georgia one's way worse though, so I don't. I don't. I think we dodged. We dodged that bullet. Um, my jersey of the week goes to. No, no particular uh, player or individual on this team. I'm just going to give it to the Los Angeles Chargers in general. Um, they decided the NFL teams were releasing all their schedules, and the Chargers decided to do it. Decided to do it uh, using The Sims, the video game. I've never played The Sims, but this was hilarious. You can like rewatch it. There's some very good 
uh, just like Easter eggs in there that they that they put in little digs at teams uh, and stuff. Like I think in that boxing ring, one of the people in it's like Cam Newton. They have like the Harbaugh's reenacting the Step Brothers scene. Uh, there's a very funny one with Harrison Butker. I'm not going to dive into it, um, <laughs> but it's it's a uh, yeah. They have like a they have like a choose your own adventure for the Saints, and one of them said Bounty Gate, which was hilarious. Um, I thought they, I thought they did a good job. I like the creative. Oh yeah, they had the Falcons. It was like a club, and Kirk Cousins was DJing, and then Michael Penix walks in the club, and Kirk Cousins like freaks out. Um, they had Casey Wolf on trial. <laughs> that that one was pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, shout out to the Chargers. I thought this was pretty funny. Bears had a fun one too. I like when teams get a little creative with this um, type of thing. It's a fun thing to do. Uh, I remember. A couple of years ago, the Giants just did a Fortnite one. That was something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, this is a fun one. Uh, the There were a couple good jabs in there. Yeah, I, I was thinking about this last night because you notice like a lot of teams are doing cool ones. And, like, what if you're just that one team that just didn't do anything cool? Like, that's well, did you that's the, the one where I feel like my job is like oh, there's Harrison Butker, but uh, yeah. I feel like there's my job is just I mean, I feel like I'm not doing my job. I feel like someone could just take it the, from me if I'm doing anything cool. Did you see what the Saints did? Uh, the, gotta Saints, remind me. the Saints did, here are all of our opponents if they were NFL logos. And it's just the, the thread of the team's logo and the date. Oh, boy, they forgot. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot it was that day. The Titans brought... Uh, you remember the, what the Titans did last year where they asked people in Nashville who the teams were and like no one knew? They did they that did again. It again. They did it again, but they brought in the, like, I guess one girl went, like, viral for whatever she said. And they brought her, I think she called the Broncos the Red Stallions. I think that's what it was. And they brought her, and they let her host it, which was kind of funny. I, I but, did not even realize that. I just saw they did it again, but that's cool. Yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought that was fun. But the Chargers one made me laugh. I wish Mizzou did this, or Mizzou should do this for basketball when, the, when their schedule releases and have it for 30 games. You have to figure out what to do for yep. – Boy, that uh, they'll really be struggling to figure out uh, how to make a creative spin on the Middle Tennessee State game. Yeah, they'll find a way. Um, but yeah, I thought this was fun. Anyway, uh, oh, next segment. Oh my god, I don't even have it queued up. This is horrible. This, this I is like bad. no cap, and he's the main bird. Bad product. Bad well, I production. like no cap, and he's the main bird. No, I like no cap, and he's the main bird. Well, oh, and you keep the loop on. How, how, get it together yeah. over there. People hear it twice because I, I I didn't transition it. Main bird of the week. Uh, Kenny. Uh, my main bird of the week goes to our guest last week, uh, and that's Max Chadwick of PFF. Um, I, I like to ask him, we give him a personal question here and there, and uh, the last one was about his wardrobe and how he's gotten a lot better at what he's wearing and he, he feels more confident out there. And he sent in a couple photos. If you're watching on the YouTube, if you watched on the YouTube last week, you saw them pop up on the screen. Um, Jack put those in and uh, Max being the good friend that he is, he posted it on, um, on his Twitter account, posted a clip and it's, it's always fun to have these conversations with, with our friends that have come on these shows multiple times and just wanted to shout out Max again. And if you're looking for that connection to the bird, uh, it's actually right here in his bio. He went to, uh, St. Joseph's, uh, in Maryland or sorry, St. Joe's in sorry, New Jersey. And they are the Falcons, <laughs> the Falcon newspaper. I thought that was really cool. I guess it is St. Joseph's, but they go by St. Joseph's. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to laugh at your school thing. It was just funny. <laughs> it was the school's yeah. off and then the wrong, not the right state. I guess I was close on the school. It is St. Joseph. They call it Yeah, St. it Joseph. is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd be, I'd be mean. Uh, yeah, I, I think this says a lot about my lack of uh, production when Kenny just sent us this and didn't say, Jack, did you make this for him? He just knew that Max did it probably himself. <laughs> oh, did Max put those in? Yeah, I thought you made I it. I put the I put the photo in the in the show, but I didn't make this clip for him. He just oh, yeah, screen recorded he, he, this. Oh He's yeah, I figured you made you made, you put the no, photo. I I was I was like, what, <laughs> I thought Kenny was gonna send me this and be like, "Do you make this for him?" And I could be like, "No, Max just did it nicely himself." But he was probably he he already was like, "There's no way Jack made this. I didn't go to any extra effort." Uh, I'm just I'm just kidding. But yeah, we love we love Max. We'll have him on uh, in the fall late summer to do a more of a preview for the season and we'll talk ea college football which we're gonna do in a second but first peyton what's your main bird my main bird of the week is gonna be drew lock because he's getting new duds uh of course drew lock the former seahawk um 
he is now a giant, of course. Uh, he plays for the Giants. He's not a bigger human. Um, he, the Giants uh, unveiled new uniforms today uh, for their 100-year anniversary called Century Red. Uh, and they're supposed to look like jerseys and uniforms from 100 years ago. And I'm here to tell you, they look absolutely awful. I mean, just <laughs> terrible. I mean, these are the ugliest things I have ever seen. Uh, they are wearing the Michigan helmet, but... It's blue. It's like giant blue instead of navy blue, and it's red instead of yellow. Uh, and the jerseys have a have an ugly stripe. I get what they're going for, and they're probably they probably knew they were going to be kind of ugly, and uh, it's more paying homage than anything else. But they are hideous. I have nothing against them. I, I like to think that it's like in Madden. I texted you guys about this earlier, but growing up when, when we would play Madden, if you played as the Packers or the Eagles, you yeah. made the dumbest looking uniforms ever with the Packers, brown pants and blue and gold ish looking Jersey. And then the Eagles had that like light blue and yellow. Yep, and yellow. I, I remember and that. That's really. what it looks like. It's like, it's like our childhood coming back. Uh, just for some reason an NFL, NFL team decided to do it. Uh, yeah, recently, I mean, Kenny and I used to play head to head, uh, in MLB, the show until we decided to put aside our differences and team up. Um, and we used to make some of the goofiest looking combos out of, uh, teams uniforms. Uh, so that is a fair, a fair thing to say. Uh, I don't think an NFL team should be, do be striving for Madden created uniform sets though. I keep looking at the helmet because in the one photo, Kenny, go go to the first photo. I think one is that the first, is that the only other photo? Like part like that one, it the helmet looks darker. But then like on Daniel Jones, like in the back, the helmet looks like it's the other kind of blue. Like it's the it's the, it's the lighting it's called lighting. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's just throw, that the lighting's throwing me off. It looks like the helmet also has like a great. Yeah, this looks awful. I mean. <laughs> I might get yeah, one with Drew Lock on there. It's like but, uh, if like it's like if like SMU took Michigan's helmet. Or like who's I don't red think blue? SMU wears. Uh they're wearing Tommy Hill figure jerseys. It looks bad. Um this is oh wait, where am I going? Yeah. My main bird of the week. What what are you Oh, I thought Kenny, I thought Kenny had pulled up a different thing for something else. Why did you put this little up a Tommy Hill figure thing? Because that was what someone said they looked like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah not Tommy bad. Hill figure shirt. Not bad. Yeah, they're these are they're awful. Um, hopefully they're only playing like Peyton said, like one one preseason game with them. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I agree. Yeah, I, hopefully they hopefully they do that. Um, my main bird of the week. I'm giving it to EA College Football, um, which. This is this may be a good thing or a bad thing. I'm gonna get y'all's opinion on this. I'm sure you guys saw this. We, we've talked to Yake College on the show. I know we're excited for it. So the the de details dropped of like what you can buy and the deluxe or regular edition dropped in like the Xbox store. People were posting about them, and I th I believe the price I saw is gonna be $150, and you get a bunch of bonuses, and then you also get the next Madden for paying that $150 price. Right your thoughts on this because i feel like it's kind of fun they're offering that much stuff and it's a good way to get people playing mad because you know a ton of people are going to buy this ea college football game but i don't think i've seen that before where they give another game within a game in a in a purchase i haven't I, i'm not a video game savant but seems kind of cool i'm gonna buy it either way yeah i don't i'm gonna i'm not getting the deluxe edition just because most of what you get in it is uh like ultimate team stuff yeah. and three days early playing i don't need to pay an extra 40 bucks for three days three extra days um but i mean for plenty of people especially if you play ultimate team or you're a big madden fan this is a great deal i mean i would get this 100 percent um not really for me but i do actually think this is good that all the bonuses are for ultimate team because it means nothing is going to be paywall gated or anything like that in dynasty or road to glory which is what people are really going to want to play um not that i thought they were going to do that but it is good to have kind of confirmation that they're not doing that so the the additional 50 dollars for the mvp bundle because the deluxe edition is the 100 one for the mvp bundle oh my bad 
Do you only get Madden? Is that the only additional thing, or do you get more packs too? Probably th- more packs. Probably just the qu- It's probably the yeah. same packs, but it's probably just the quantities more. It's probably double. Someone needs to send a f- better breakdown in these articles. Uh, for the ones that <laughs> you don't know, for the deluxe edition, it is a three-day early access. Forty-six hundred college football points, which I assume will be the currency in this game. Alma oh, mater, damn, ultimate man. team pack, which is you choose one player item out of 134 imagine scrolling through that right when you get the game and the cover athlete ultimate team pack which i think is a cool one uh, choose a, a choice of one of three player items and then a bring glory home ultimate team uniform item, which doesn't say what that is but maybe it's like a retro uniform for the, the team you want That'd be cool. It'd be cool to have some vintage Missouri stuff or something like that. But I mean, I'll give ultimate team a look, but like, this is not something that I need to have. Like for, I I was going to say, I think people were kind of bummed that all the details in it were about ultimate team and not about the road. I don't know why, what would you put in? What would you give as a bonus in? Well, that's true. But I, I think, I think it's just like people worry about like with other EA games, how the focus just goes all the way on ultimate team and the other modes that are actually fun get, forgotten well that's going to happen i mean that's just the way video games are like they're they're all they can make more money off of ultimate team they can't make more money off of dynasty or anything like that as long as dynasty and road to glory are in a good state on release which all the details have been encouraging there is a transfer portal nil is somewhat involved in recruiting and stuff i it seems encouraging. We'll see when it actually releases, but I have no problem with the focus being put on ultimate team. As long as dynasty is in a good spot. I'm so uh, according curious to USA today. The MVP bundle will come with a three day early access uh, for both games. So that includes Madden as well. A variety of other benefits, including all the things uh, listed there and a Heisman hopeful ultimate team pack, which it doesn't specify what that is. Luther Burden, Luther Burden's <laughs> in that pack. All right, I'm paying 150 bucks for this. Yep, yep, because yep, Luther go. Burden's going to be in that pack. Uh, my my one question in that cover athlete ultimate team pack that choose one player out of three, who would you pick? I'd pick Hunter because he can play receiver and corner. Yeah, I feel yeah, like that's probably, an easy one. That's probably the right answer. Although I feel like they're going to make Quinn Ewers like broken. I feel like they're going to make him so good. Yeah, nobody's going to take Good Donovan question. Edwards. Yeah, wasn't the best running Make back a wish. team last year. Um, Congrats on your team winning while you were the backup. Here's a. I'm so. Back. I'm so curious to see. Considering the real world doesn't know how to do nil, how is a video game going to set up some sort of nil system? That's like what I'm. I, I want to see probably what they do. It. You're probably going to have yeah. a pool of funds you can dig into. What if? What if like. You- what if we people start playing this game and all of a sudden you know it gets to the higher ups and they're like actually the way they do nil in this game did, let's just do that what what laws do we have to pass it just becomes the awesome. the, the regular norm i think that's going to be interesting to explore um but yeah anyway ea college football coming out uh there's i think a trailer comes out tomorrow doesn't it i thought that i saw that today is that tomorrow on friday i think it drops tomorrow let's hope it just says coming soon there I think there was a countdown said it was tomorrow. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll we'll figure that. I'll figure that out while Kenny does his uh, his best thing he learned first. Okay, well I'll, I'll go first, even though it's always Peyton. But ah, sh- uh, this you, is why, a- do we, why do we change it? No, do Peyton, do Peyton, do Peyton. I'm sorry. Ignore that. <laughs> uh, my my uh my best thing I learned uh, a couple of Mizzou rookies that were drafted. Uh, they put pen to paper, guys. They're officially members of their new teams. Javon Foster was one of them. He signed his rookie deal with the Jaguars. He had a nice video saying he was excited uh, to get to work at Duval. Um, And the other one that I saw, I don't know if any others, I don't know if Ennis or anyone like that has signed yet, but Chris Abrams Drain also signed his rookie contract. I think it was the first Broncos draft pick to sign. Uh, So, yeah, a couple guys are officially, they've officially recognized their NFL dream. Uh, Super cool, super happy for them. Uh, except for Tyron Hopper, I got to root against you now. Sorry, um, but and Dennis, I guess that's depressing. 
Uh, one thing I'll take from this, uh, very, you know, congrats to those guys living out their dreams. Uh, Jacksonville, this is awesome. Uh, Jags 95, it's a play on the new X-Men show that came out for, from the 90s, uh, finishing off the show with X-Men 97. They're doing that with – they have their new throwback uniforms that the Jaguars do, of course, and we've talked about those. They look awesome. Pretty cool header on Twitter as well um, with Trevor Lawrence as Cyclops. Kenny is a big fan of that show. He's a huge fan. So yeah, I just it finished cool. it last night. I mean, this is just pretty cool. If you grew up in the '90s, of course I did not. I wasn't even born yet, but it's a still a very classic and iconic logo. And the Jaguars did a good spinoff on it. Uh, the f- I found it. The f- there, yeah, there is a full reveal for college football coming tomorrow. By the way, very nice. I will be watching. Lock into that. And that is right. for hey. today for the people that are listening. Uh, best yeah, thing sorry, I learned yeah, this week. Friday. This is a really cool story. Um, we don't know the guys over at the Woods, Water, and Mizzou podcast, but we've been following each other for a little while now. And I want to read the full story. It'll take a, a second here. But um, I've been torn on sharing this because they did not do it for attention. Saturday afternoon, I had a knock on my hospital door, and I said, come in. It was a man and woman with Mizzou gear from head to toe. The woman asked me my name, and I said, yes, that's me. She said, you don't know us, uh, but we do know about you. We're Coach Drinkwitz's parents, and we heard your story, and you're a big Mizzou fan. We wanted to come by to cheer you up and pray for you, or pray over you. Uh, They had a bag full of Mizzou gear that they gave me, prayed a very powerful prayer over me, and talked with me for over 30 minutes. Come to find out, we we have mutual friends from the church that we go uh, to that told them my story. And they wanted to do that, or do what they could to help. I'm still in shock, and I'm so grateful uh, that they would do that for a complete stranger. I don't share this to boast on me, but to share how uh, great of people they are. Uh, It's not hard to see how Elia is the man uh, he he is with his parents like that. Thank you again, Mr. Jerry and Susie Drinkwitz for doing such a kind act for a complete stranger, M-I-Z. We don't, like I said, we don't know the guys over there, but I feel like this is such a cool story. Uh, It it just kind of shows you um, the parents that Drinkwitz had and kind of like the life he grew up with to have just his parents go and go to a complete stranger's hospital room and, and, you know, try to cheer him up, try to make his day better when, whenever he's battling you know, an illness or whatever's going on for him personally. Yeah. I mean, obviously like we don't know Drinkwitz or his parents personally, but I mean, Drinkwitz, I mean, he always seems very beloved by his players. Uh, so, I mean, it's not hard to see, uh, where he gets that from, clearly, uh, if his parents are willing to do something like this for a complete total stranger. So very nice story. Uh, yeah, very, very good stuff. Yeah, nice. Nice to hear. And again, yeah, like it's not like, you know, he's not saying, oh, I'm a good friend of drink and I knew his parents or whatever, like growing up. It's like, no, they, they came out of the, the woodwork. They didn't know each other. And they came to to visit a guy who supports their son could just like you know the three of us do and so many other mizzou fans do so you know it's it's kind of a cool recognition that him and his family sort of feel the love and they're giving it they're giving it back and want to uh you know be there for their their supporters and stuff like that so i think yeah i think that's a that's great good uh good story kenny i did not see that on my own time this is the first time uh seeing of that but nice um my best thing i learned this week we're staying in missouri just the complete switching the vibe a little bit and obviously you know we hope that uh woods water podcast hosts you know everything's all right and they uh make a speedy recovery and whatnot um i'm going to one of my favorite twitter accounts for my best thing i learned this week which is message board geniuses uh they just tweet funny stuff from message boards they tweeted something uh from a mizzou one missouri is the best state in the south and they gave 15 reasons why the first of which being recreational uh, MJ, which is marijuana, if you don't know the, the lingo. That being the first thing is is quite funny. First state to oust the Confederacy. Tea not loaded with sugar. Roast beef sandwich chain doesn't overcook their meat. Only distinct pizza style. Four distinct seasons. Most pristine scenic rivers and streams. Best party lake. Most caves and springs. Uh, best wildlife management and conservation area access. Manufacturers better pickup trucks. Best monuments, only Southern football team to defeat Michigan or Ohio State last year. That feels uh, like pretty pandering, but I like that. Uh, best pro baseball and hockey franchises, historically. Oh, sorry, I, I, historically. And best NFL team currently, uh, first openly gay NFL draftee. <laughs> uh, was, that is 
that did happen in Missouri. I th- this is this is the overall thing I took away from this, and I don't know if we've had this this talk on this show. Is Missouri in the South? Missouri is weird because it Parts is it. definitively like one of the few states where you can distinctly see like four different regional identities in it. Uh, part of it, it feels Southern. Part of it feels very Midwestern. Um, part of it just feels very Great Plainsy. Uh, so I, I, I don't think it's uh, you can totally nail it down. Uh, only thing I disagree with on this list, by the way, uh, like inherently is the distinct pizza style uh, just because I think St. Louis pizza is not very good personally. But um, other than that, I mean, all of those are very valid reasons. Uh, I got two things from this. Uh, okay. The first one, I got three. I'll go three. Uh, number three, tea loaded with, uh, with sugar. That's where I draw the line. Uh, you need your tea loaded with sugar and not loaded like this guy mentions uh four distinct seasons that's called a continental climate and i'm all for that one that is true i learned that a lot best party lake um also an epicenter for COVID 19 so that is a <laughs> he was right on number eight and uh those videos were pretty hilarious uh they were <laughs> back then um see that's where i go because like four distinct seasons like do you do you don't really get that in the in the south south like Missouri vibe wise gives me more of a Midwestern vibe, but I do agree that like you go to some parts of it and it feels more Southern and it feels more great Plainsy. It's like, so maybe that is just why it's the best. It's the best state. Cause like, again, you could, you could full circle that argument and be like, it has ever, it has a little bit of everything seasons wise, climate wise, culture wise, big cities, the, the, the show, the middle, uh, that was kind of on when we were growing up. I don't know if you guys watched it, but it was called the middle because it was in the middle of the country in Iowa. I honestly would argue that Missouri is the middle of the country. It is the heart. It kind of looks like a heart uh, more than any, like a realistic heart. Sure. So I guess that's where this guy's going. It just has everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just, I like the, I like the uh, dedication to the, to the state listing off the reasons i wonder what some of the responses were to this but listen you guys are missourians watching this put in put in the comments what what do you what makes missouri the best southern state is it the best southern state is it a is it a southern state is it a midwestern state i don't know um yeah see midwest isn't south or midwest missouri isn't south it's midwest af the south nah midwest we've got some we've got some back and forth like i don't know people can't people can't go to like I don't like go to the Ozarks and tell me that's not Southern. That's a pretty Southern yeah. feel uh, down in the Ozarks. You go up to Northern Missouri, that that's very like Plainsy. Uh, you go to other spots, it's very Midwesterny. Like Columbia feels pretty Midwestern to me, um, yeah, personally. But I don't know. There are parts of Missouri that are undoubtedly Southern in their identity. Yeah, I, I I have to get to like an actual. I never I never took a trip to the Ozarks while spending my time in Missouri. I'll need to I need to check it out. Lake of the Ozarks, do a little pontoon ride around or something. Um, all right, well, embrace debate. That's what I that's what I'm ending it with. If you want to argue about Mizzou being Midwest or South in the in the comments, but that's all this one for. comes from your favorite TV series, The Today Show. Uh, guys, what did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Don't um, overthink. Think about a janitor. Think about what he has. I'm mop, something with a mop. You're a little off. Any guesses, Kenny? Sweep some sweep something. All right. So imagine you he you just open the door to a janitor's closet. He jumps out at you and he says, "What supplies?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good show boys uh that was yeah we got that eventually kenny's ready he's shutting that supplies down. supplies all right uh hope everyone enjoyed we'll be back uh on monday we'll probably talk we'll definitely talk some softball see how that goes for um mizzou can you please stop it's very distracting when i'm that'll do it all uh are you for... kidding me <laughs> this is, i will not stand for this you're gonna lose your moving screen privileges Hope everyone enjoyed the show. We'll come back Monday. Uh, maybe we'll have softball. Maybe we'll have.
some basketball news. I don't know. Uh, but until then, see you guys Monday.